Seattle. It's time now for the Apple Cup 1995, the Washington State Cougars against the Washington Huskies. Hello, everyone. I'm Bud, Bud Namick, along with Big Casper, former Cougar quarterback. We'll have all the action for you today on this special broadcast. A special hello to all you Cougar fans in Spokane, Pullman, the Tri-Cities, and in Vancouver. You're the only ones receiving this broadcast today. We're going to have a lot of fun. It, it'll be an interesting scenario to see how ready young Ryan Leaf is at quarterback. His very first collegiate start, and he does so in the house of the dog. Well, he's got a little extra to contend with. This game is emotionally charged, and he played very well last week against Stanford, but it was a little smaller crowd last week. He's got to do exactly what he did, though. Just make sure that he's throwing the ball to the areas where his reads take him. Don't try to make it up. Don't try to force it. And hopefully Frank Madu will be healthy and the running game can also assist him. So the Cougs got to take care of the football, not turn it over in stupid places. First couple series will be real interesting because Ryan Leaf admits he's not going to be ready to face this crowd and this Husky team. One of the guys he will be facing is Lawyer Malloy, the outstanding safety for the Huskies, leads the team in tackles, and he heads up a strong Husky defense. Well, returning Pac-10 player, he's a very, very good player against the run. He's not as good against the pass. He really likes to come up and force things to happen against the run, but you can bring him up, you can suck him in, and perhaps, again, if the Cougars can establish the run with Frank, then you can go over the top maybe later on in the football game. But initially, I think the, the Cougs want to keep it very simple, very straightforward. Ryan Leaf created a little excitement earlier this week when he said he thinks Lawyer Malloy is a little too aggressive and that the Husky cornerbacks might be susceptible to some passes. We'll see what happens. <laughs> you can see Mike Price leading the Cougars out his seventh season. And there's Jim Lambright or Jim Halfbright, depending on who you hear from over here in Seattle. Record of 20, 11, and 1. John Wales will boot it away for the Huskies. Randy Jones out of Spokane's Ferris High School, given a scholarship as a kicker. He is redshirting this year. For those of you who are watching this broadcast up in the Farm Credit Building in Spokane, wondering about Mr. Jones, he's redshirting. And Wales is a junior, and we're underway. With a strong wind behind him, he kicks it out of bounds. So that's a first mistake of the day against the Huskies. And the Cougars will start with the football on their own 35. Well, that's a break, I guess, if you're if you're the Washington State Cougars, because you're, and we are the Washington State Cougars. Uh, with the wind behind him, Wales yanks it out of bounds. Ryan Leaf ready to get it on. Completing just under 50% of his passes, 363 yards, three touchdowns and interception. We'll see how long Frank Madu can go. The ribs feel better, but he had that bell rung big time last week against Stanford. Dumas, McWashington, Carpenter, the wide receivers, McCloskey, and Sakanic, the seniors, on that offensive line. First down from the 35, and Leaf will hand it off to Madu, and he's got some running room. And a Cougar first down. And I'll tell you what, let's have some fun. Let's pretend Glenn Johnson's here. And all of you watching in Pasco, Vancouver, also in Spokane and Pullman, and that's another Cougar first down. All right, Cleet takes care of that. Here's the replay. Straight ahead, blocking on the right side, Knuff, who was a big factor in the game last year, the two tight end alignment, and just straight ahead zone blocking. They can move these Huskies out of here because they're not very big, averaging just over 245 pounds on the defensive line for for the dogs. Huskies are seventh in the Pac-10, giving up 151 yards a game on the ground. Leafs first pass in an Apple Cup is completed to Chad Carpenter, and that may be enough for a first down. We'll see where they spot it. Looks like it's right about there. Huskies with a three-man front line. They'll bring the linebackers up as well. Suki Wiggs, David Ritchie, Deke Devers, outstanding across that front line. The linebackers, Akaika Malloy and Jason Chorak on the outside are tough. Ink Aliaga, Jerry Jensen, very stable in the middle. Malloy and Parrish to safeties. Greenlaw and Reeser are the cornerbacks, and those are the guys that Ryan Leaf feels he can take advantage of. Well, we saw right there the Cougars running the out route, and that's something we haven't seen much. We're used to them going up and doing the uh, the five-yard hitch and, and doing the hook, but with Ryan Leaf's strong arm, he can get that ball out there, so it just gives that cornerback a little something extra to think about. Now there's Mike Price. He has a fun play call coming up here. It's second and inches. Does he go away from the script in this situation with a short yardage, perhaps some play action fun here? Yeah, I think you can. Uh, the, the main thing they want to do here is is establish the running game and, and keep the ball on the Cougar side of the of the 
I guess the time clock is what I'm trying to mm -hmm. get to. And so what we'd like to have is a nice four or five minute drive. Let's go ahead, get the first down. Ryan Leaf with just a sneak and, and pop it along. Well, one of the things the Cougars have been very adept at so far this year is busting Frank Madu loose in a short yardage situation. And the way the Huskies like to come up and bunch up against the run, if the Cougars give it to Madu here and he gets a block, this could go all the way. Let's see what happens. The Huskies snuffed it out. They won the battle that time. And it will probably be third and short now. Madu number four in the Pac-10 in rushing. Interesting here, they run away from the tight end almost in a counter motion, and uh, that looks to be almost like a mix, mix up play there with Madu cutting it back because they had all the strength on the right side of their football. Didn't pick it up there. Here again, you got two, two downs in the, this territory to go ahead and get the first down. Three tight ends as Jeff Thomas checks in. Kwame Stewart, and I don't think he got it. Some penetration by Suki Wiggs. Jason Chorak in there as well. It's going to be about a half yard gain is all. And it'll be fourth and a half yard for the Cougars. Well, uh, unfortunately, they've lost yards on these two plays. Uh, Mike Price looks like he's going to go ahead and go, uh, go for this. Jay Dumas on the sidelines along with Chad Carpenter. They're not coming into the game. We got the big lineman line up here and again you just got to be able to make a yard here in order to keep this drive alive. This could define this football game. Madu first down Washington State. Very important in a game of this magnitude and with this Husky crowd to get something going early and that's what the Cougars have done on this fourth down play. Nice block by Miguel or uh, by Stewart. In there on the left side, Jensen comes across, picks off Parrish, and then Jensen is blocked by Kwame Stewart. First down for the Cougars, and the emotion, you could really see it on the Cougar sideline. Madu, the lone setback, that's Dumas in motion. Leaf, play action, time, throws, has his man open, Dumas, first down, Washington State down to the 20-yard line. Nice read this time by Ryan Leaf. He's going to come off the counter action, do the semi roll. It's a nice block by Corey Solomon, and then sees that the safety Malloy is underneath and pops it right in there. So a nice bit of work by the offensive line. Also a good play call on first down. Cougars are threatening now just outside the 20. And Randy Johnson says, or rather Glenn Johnson says, and that's, that's another. another Cougar first down. Randy Johnson, of course, designing the logo on those Cougar helmets. So according to Cleet, that's a fake audible. Leaf, the quick toss, the catch by McWashington, and it will be spotted at the 17. So Leaf has hit his first three passes. That one a pickup of four. It'll set up a second and six from the 17. And now it's a bit shorter field. Well, the, here you see Ryan, he's big and tall. He has to step up a little bit and but delivers this ball high and outside. Reeser can't get there. Not a big pickup, but it's nice to see that Ryan Leaf has the arm strength to throw in this wind. He's been very accurate so far in his three throws. And the wind is swirling, so it's hard to say who's got the advantage at what time. I believe that was Merriweather getting down to about the 15-yard line. Miguel Merriweather, the freshman out of West Covina. He was by credited with two Jackson. yards. It'll make it third and four from the 15. And a big play call here as you see Mark McCloskey, Corey Solomon on that offensive line for the Cougars. Ryan Leaf again has excellent running ability. If the play doesn't open right away, he can run the ball. They have to get to the 11 for the first down. Leaf, time into the end zone. A little too far for Kearney Adams. Pass interference. He Lloyd Malloy flagged for the hold on Kearney Adams. You can see Kearney trying to get his left arm up to catch that football, and the lawyer put the handcuffs on him. Officials right there to make that call. Here we see it again, just going to throw it to the corner of the end zone. Nice job by Merriweather to pick up the blitzing Parrish. You don't see it there, but he was holding him, and lawyer knew it. 
So the pass interference penalty will make it first and goal from the seven for Washington State. That's Pat Flood, our referee today. So would that be contempt of court? <laughs> Well, here's where it gets tough. The Huskies tough in the red zone. Let's see what the Cougars can do. First and goal from the seven. Washington State started on their own 35-yard line. They've been on the move since. Converted a fourth down to keep the drive alive. Madu back in the backfield. He has the ball. Cuts it up the middle. Down to the one. Nice Madu bit of blocking inside there. Frank Madu just squirts through and goes over the top. Loses his helmet, but is very close to the one-yard line. Great blocking. You see Siku Wiggs just getting blown out by McCloskey, riding him down. Big collision there, Jensen and Greenlaw, but Cougars definitely threaten here. I'd run the same play. Stewart and Madu in the backfield now. Second and goal from the one. Kwame Stewart. Let's see if they give it to him. Officials are going to spot it at about the two-inch line. Money sure in the ball carrier. Little penetration in there by Richie. He stopped at the goal line. Just a little more effort to get through there. See if that ball crosses the goal line. You can see no, it doesn't quite get across that white stripe. Well, this is, we've seen when the Cougars had a tall quarterback before and Drew Bledsoe, the sneak. And let's see if they go with Leaf or they'll hand it off. It's Leaf, touchdown, Washington State. Brian Leaf, six foot six, goes in behind his big senior, Mark McCloskey, and gets it done. Great opening drive for Washington State. You can see the emotion again. Just trying to get down below Wicks and Richie, and boy, there's just no one that can uh, even come close to stopping that. Great drive. That's the way to keep this crowd out of it. Tony Truitt will come on now to kick the extra point. And Truitt adds the extra point, and the Cougars have taken a 7-0 lead over the Huskies. Tony Truant will kick it away. Again, the wind that's swirling. Terry Holloman will be back deep, along with Fred Coleman. Terry Holloman is a backup running back for the Huskies. His brother, Tory Holloman, is a redshirt freshman at Washington State, both out of Cascade High School in Everett. Watch this kickoff here. It might be difficult to handle. Again, last week we saw the squib kick hitting the knuckler down there, and again, this wind might be swirling. It's a pooch kick, and it'll be a fair catch signaled for by the Huskies. And the ball down at about the 27-yard line. Jeremy Brigham, a backup tight end for the Huskies. And here comes Damon Heward for the first time today. The senior out of Puyallup brings the dogs to the line of scrimmage at the 27. Heward, 81 yards away from passing Sonny Sixkiller to become the all-time leading passer here at the University of Washington. Rashawn Sheehy, the lone setback. Thomas not in on this first play. Well, batted in the air. It's incomplete. Robert Booth, the senior out of Pasco, got a big paw on that one, knocked it down. Take a look at the rest of this Husky offense. The front line, Bob Sapp, a big one at the weak tackle. Trevor Highfield in the middle. Eric Battle, Benji Olson on the strong side of that line. Damon Hewitt has not had good games in the uh, couple of outings that he's had against the Cougars, and he reiterated that a couple times, so hopefully he'll continue the streak of, of struggling. Hewitt to throw on second down. We got a penalty flag, and what a hit delivered, as that catch was made by Jerome Payton, and boy, did he pay for it. Cougars might be offsides here. 
It's what you'd anticipate with the location of the flag and the fact that the play went on. Nope. No, how about that? A little motion. Take them back. So far, everything going right for the Cougs. Officials are even on our side. So the ball will be pushed back to the 22-yard line. Take a look at the Cougar defense now. Dwayne Sanders is playing on a gimpy ankle. We'll see how much he is able to play. Chris Hayes also gimpy ankle. Darling and Nansen will be joined by Glover if Hayes has to leave. Shad Hinchin injured, not playing. D. and Cola is starting at that cornerback position. Sanders and Booth at the ends right now. And here comes second and 15. Heward to throw and has the completion. Got about half of it as Fred Coleman makes the catch. Coleman, a sophomore out of Tyler, Texas, his 31st catch of the year. Pretty good protection this time. Cook's trying to come with a stunt. Robert Booth arrives there just a half second late. Coleman's able to dig it out, running the little curl route underneath the coverage. I would expect that they'll go right after Moore and Cola. Janoski's matched up against him now. Sheehy, the lone setback. Cougars show blitz. Chris Hayes dancing around on that gimpy ankle. Heward with an audible. He'll throw for it, and it's dropped. Would have had the first down, but the Huskies will have to punt it away now. Janoski not able to come up with it. The ball is a little bit outside for him. And those are the kind of plays that the Cougars need is not having the, the Huskies make the clutch plays on third downs. Huskies been very bad this year in third down conversions. Maybe that's why they don't have it in their stats package. I was looking for it everywhere and it's not there. Dumas is deep for Washington State. Jeff Prince to punt it away. Prince has time, a low knuckling kick. It will hit and Dumas will feel it on the bounce and has a little room. If he can stay in, he gets knocked out of bounds. But the Cougars will have good field position again. Cam Cleveland out of Cedro Woolley makes the tackle on Dumas, and they'll spot it at the 39 of Washington State. Cougars with great field position again to start this drive. First drive started at the 35, now at the 39. Madu and Stewart in the backfield. Stewart in the blocking back position, and that play just never got off the ground for Washington State. Kearney Adams had uh, jumped uh, and moved from his wide receiver position and had actually gone into the neutral zone. So Kearney Adams, uh, when he saw the defense jumping around, the Huskies will shift all day into this eagle package they like to play. Uh, wide receivers, though, no excuse for him to be jumping off sides. Just watch the football. Well, the Cougars at first and 15 now. They come out in the same formation. Huskies bouncing around. The give is to Madu. Good penetration by the dogs. And there's Ikaika Malloy into the backfield to throw Madu for the loss. Huskies really coming up field. And Madu running behind the pulling guard, McIndoo. You'll see that McIndoo gets hit and knocked upfield by Deke Devers. And there's Sanderson also getting drilled back into the running lanes. Good, good defensive penetration that time. Huskies selling out, trying to create something on defense. Second and 21 now with the ball on the 28. See if the Huskies come after Leaf in an obvious throwing situation. The Cougars play action. Leaf has time. Now he's going to run. And he's got some room to roam. And he loses his footing at the 38. Otherwise, he would have had a chance to pick up at least another five. That's all right. That's good decision making by Ryan there is the Nobody comes open. The play action pass trying to keep the linebackers in. You see Aliaga steps up trying to play Madu. 
Ryan looking down deep, nobody there, and he's just going to run this one. Had a lot of room initially, and then he's going to plant the foot, and whoo, skating no, down. No, he didn't plant the foot. <laughs> yeah. So he got a half of it, though. Third down and 10, we can pick this up. Halfway through the opening quarter. Cougars lead it 7-0. Lee has time, guns it out. It is hot and dropped. Eric Moore, good coverage that time. Reggie Reeser, and Reeser had some help as well by Kaika Malloy, and the Cougars will have to punt it away this time. Ryan's going to look out here and deliver this ball a little bit late. Reggie Reese is able to come off the uh, slant route and, and make a play. Good job by that time by the corner. And the Huskies hold, and this will bring on Martin to punt into the wind, although the flag is drooping at this point, not really swirling around. Martin is sixth in the nation, leads the Pac-10, just under 44 yards a kick. Janoski at his own 19. A knuckleball, and I think we're going to see a lot of these today. Cougars are going to be penalized for not giving Janoski room to make the catch. Justin Stallings was down there for Washington State. Well, the question here is he being blocked into him, and it may be a clip as opposed to interference because it looked like there was a, a Husky player right on the back forcing Justin into the to Janoski. See what the official Pat Blood has to say. While they're sorting it out, no, that wasn't Donnie Sasa you saw in Husky purple. That was Patrick Casey, who's an offensive lineman. That's an unusual call there where they're calling the, the Cougar for an illegal push. You can see the, the player going flying by. That was Justin and Warren Cola makes the tackle. Only a five yarder though, and the Huskies will start 28 yard line. Last drive started on the 27. They made it to the 33. Sheehy's first carry, and he has a chance to bounce it outside, and he'll go down. Pads go flying as Brian Walker made the stop, but a gain of about four, maybe five on that play. Looked like the Cougs had this one snuffed out pretty well. James Darling hesitates a little bit in the hole, and Brian Walker's going to grab the shoe right off of Sheehy's foot and, and then throw it at him. That's what I like. Sheehy, a 5'11", 200-pound sophomore out of Bakersfield. He's averaging just over five yards a carry. He's rushed for 12 touchdowns. Haven't seen Richard Thomas in the backfield yet, the fullback. It's strictly Sheehy there again. Second and five. Sheehy gets it again. Same play, different result as the Cougars throw Sheehy for the loss. And that was Dwayne Sanders who made a big play that time, fighting off the block. And Dwayne Stewart comes up to help out. Boy, just stumping Eric Battle. Same exact play. They try to spread it out with three wide receivers. And there you see Sanders getting a piece of him. And the Cougar defense, Chris Hayes, looks to be moving around pretty well on that ankle. He's fighting through the pain. Loss of two, it's third and seven from the 31 for the Huskies. Dwayne Stewart has had a fine sophomore year for Washington State. Playing with that big cast on his right hand. Another third down facing the Huskies. They were actually executed, and then dropped the ball last time. Swing it out to Sheehy. He's got some running room, and let's see where the spot is. It looks like it's just shy of the first down marker. Let's see. Right there on the on the. 20, or I'm sorry, on the 38-yard line, started the drive on the 28, so this will be a big decision if they have not made it uh, from the spot here where the line judge put it down. It looks like they've got it, though. Where they had the sticks on the sideline, they were actually above the 38, if that's indeed where they are officially placed. Just dumping the ball out to Sheehy on the sideline, letting him use his speed and agility to get the first down, and he does. So call it a gain of seven, and the Dogs have their initial first down of the day. So first and 10 from the 38 now, 5.48 left to play in the first quarter. 7-0 Washington State. Damon Ewart already the total offense leader here at the University of Washington, trying to move in on Sonny Six Killers passing record. Gary Holmes in the game. He's got the bad knee, but he's in there fighting it too. Hand off to Sheehy on the draw. Can he get outside? Gets to midfield where he's knocked down. And a first down for the Huskies. And the Huskies getting a little emotion back now. The 
Omar Moraes comes up field a little bit too much. He's able to get kicked out by Bob Sapp. Cougars inside. Chris Hayes trips and uh, leaves it up to Henderson and Warren Cola to polish it off, but a good first down carry by the dogs, and they're starting to mix it up a little better. First series they came in, three straight passes. Now they're trying to run the ball. Big numbers for Sheehy against UCLA. Thomas, the lone setback. The fullback will get it back to Heward. He's going to throw. He's got a man, Janoski. He's open. The catch at the 15. Down at the one. The Huskies go razzle-dazzle, and it pays off. Thomas flips it back. Blue Flicker back to the quarterback, and Hewitt has all day long and throws a nice shot to Janoski, who does have to wait for it a little bit. Stewart chases him down, and he may be injured as he comes off the field. Huskies first and goal at the one. And let's see where they mark the progress as Terry Holloman tries to take it in. No gain on that one. Holloman, only nine carries coming into this game. The tenth does not result in his first touchdown. Just trying to blow a hole in there, but nothing doing. Cougars fill in the hole nicely that time. Nansen comes in, puts the tackle on Holloman. Sheehy comes back. There was a flag on that play as you look at Bill Doba on the Cougar sideline. James Darling asking, what, what is this all about? Looks like they're moving it. On the field on the defense, it's a half the distance penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. So first still be first down. down. The Cougars with too many men on the field. That's a pretty good defense if you don't get caught. They'll move the half the ball half the distance, which is not much. And the Huskies will try it again. First and goal from the half. Yard line. Thomas and Sheehy in the backfield. Sheehy, touchdown, Washington. <laughs> so the Huskies able to go 72 yards and get the touchdown. Going behind Trevor Highfield and big Benji Olson, the freshman, 6'4", 300 pounds, and they got it done in there. And uh, again, they had four shots from a half inch. John Wales to attempt the extra point. He's missed three this year out of 28 attempts. Shane Fortney, the backup quarterback, is the holder. Bad snap. Nansen trying to get it to bounce. The Cougars want to be able to return it, and they'll just settle for covering it. So. It's the Apple Cup. You have to expect this sort of thing. Well, the Huskies have had a lot of trouble with the extra points and, and snaps and field goals against Oregon. Bad snap caused uh, really what the Huskies feel of them to lose that football game. And here again, it's high. Fortney can't get a handle on the slippery ball. He's been standing over there. And Johnny Nansen just tries to swat it out here, maybe get a good bounce. Chris Hayes eventually grabs it, but he falls down. And, Cougars still have the lead as the misfire for the Huskies costs them a point. Would have been nice to rumble on down and put a couple more points on the Cougar side of it, but we'll get the football back, leading 7 to 6. 421 left in the first quarter. Seven to six, Cougars with the lead as John Wales gets set to kick it off. Seven plays, 72 yards, three minutes and eight seconds for the Huskies on that drive. Wales hooked the first one out of bounds. Let's see if he tries to get the ball downfield a little bit better. Again, the, the wind swirling, but he should have it basically at his back. Moran Cola and McWashington deep. This is a better kick. 
And it'll be more in Cola at the goal line, and he's going to bring it out after a very slight hesitation and get tackled as he actually ran over the back of Jeff Thomas, who was trying to block Terry Holloman. So after two possessions where the Cougars had very good field position, this time the Cougars will be backed up a bit. So look at that scoring drive with Rashawn Sheehy cashing it in for his 13th touchdown of the season. Well, here's the spot on the field that you got to be real careful. And even if uh, you do have a player that is the caliber of, of Leaf, you want to make sure you're not calling audibles because it's loud down here in this horseshoe side. Draw to Madhu. And he is dropped for about a two yard loss. The Huskies have managed to slow things down offensively for Washington State after that initial drive. Have they changed anything, please? Well, they're coming up field awful fast. Uh, these guys are, like we said, not big, but very quick, and they're just trying to get penetration. And I think what the Cougars need to do is, is come out and just go right at them, but here they're going to go with five wide receivers and nobody in the backfield. Madhu has carried six times, three for positive yards. Three have resulted in a loss. Leaves quick toss through Miguel Merriweather's hands. Merriweather seemed to lose his footing. Ryan Leafs over there telling him, come on, let's go, let's get in this game. I gotta, I gotta have you with the hook. Be re prepared. As you see, total yards so far, the big flea flicker to Janoski, a large part of the 83. So now Cougars, third and 11, would like to get a first down here. Slow down the Husky momentum a bit. Leaf pressure, he'll go down. First sack of the day, give it to David Ritchie, his fifth of the year. David Ritchie gets into the pocket awfully quick. Comes around McIndoo and is just able to get in there and, and Ryan doesn't have any room to step up. So the Cougars with not much being generated in these last two drives. Martin will have to rip it from uh, his own end zone. There you see the first one went 38 yards. Dave Janoski sets up at midfield. Here's a good view of the punt. George Martin, the senior out of Hobart, Indiana. He's had a fine senior season. Gets the kick away. It's a low kick. Let's see if it'll take a Cougar bounce. It won't. It's down by Washington State at about the 44-yard line. So the Huskies will have very good field position with two minutes and 47 seconds left in the first quarter. Cougs on top, seven to six. Heward needs 14 yards now to pass six killers. Sheehy bounces it outside and is run down by Johnny Nansen from behind. But Cleet, all of a sudden, the last couple of weeks, we saw Stanford and now the Huskies able to get some yardage outside against the Cougars, which we haven't seen in a long time. You'll see Johnny Nansen gets caught coming inside trying to stop the football, and, and he's got to contain. He's the outside man on the line of scrimmage. And he's got to maintain his discipline, even though he sees that the play is going to come inside him. Sheehy does a nice job running to daylight there. Sheehy, just above his season average at six yards a carry. First down, dogs from the Cougar 30. Heward will throw over the middle. Knocked around, intercepted by Washington State. And the Cougars will set it down. The ball bounces around, and D. Morincola gets his first interception as a Washington State Cougar. Well, they've been on the earlier play action, flea flicker play. This time it's just straight play action, and you can see that the Stewart gets his head turned around, tips that ball off, and even though he's not able to catch it with that big club he's got in there, Morincola is right there. And the interception, big play for Washington State, dodging 
the bouncing ball right there. Morincola has the presence of mind just to sit down and take a breather. Chris Hayes making sure he did. Trips to the right for Ryan Leaf and the Cougars. Madu in the backfield, first and 10 from the 20. All right, you said no audibles. A mix up on the handoff, and Madu still battling and picks up a yard. The running game just not doing anything from the standpoint of developing on the line of scrimmage. This time, Madu almost runs into Ryan Leaf. At this point, I'd like to see both Eric Moore and David Knuff in the lineup, see if we can't use our strength. And that's, in fact, what they've got, the two tight end alignment here, try to get something done in the line of scrimmage. Madu's last three rushes, minus eight yards after picking up 22 yards on the first four. Knuff in motion, leap, a little time, pump fakes, wants to throw, and it's caught by Knuff. Boy, I'll tell you what. From as high as we are here in the press box, I couldn't tell if that was going to be Knuff or be intercepted, and Knuff somehow made the catch. Might have got away with one there. Well, he throws it into coverage here, running the wheel route off of the tight end, and he just floats it up over the top of Parrish. Reeser is not able, again, this time to get there, and that's a big first down, gives the Coots some breathing room, and turns the tide a little bit. Again, the two tight end offense is what killed the Huskies last year, and I think they should stick with it. Double tight ends here. Leaf is four of six throwing in this game. First down, Cougars at the 39. Madu, nothing doing. The Huskies have got the running game smothered now. And the Huskies just have not been a great run defense team so far this year, but they are right now. That time, Chark is able to come underneath the block of Knuff. And, and stuff up that play. And again, the coaches up, up here will see that Chark is going to allow himself to be hooked and let's bounce it outside him. So I wouldn't be surprised. Same general play with the motion man and, and bounce it outside. Second and 12 now. And they go up the middle. Might get up to the 40 as where the ball will be spotted, I believe. So the Cougars will be faced with a third and long. Kwame Stewart, the ball carrier. Mike Price instructions out to his redshirt freshman quarterback, Ryan Lee. You can see uh, Mike's out there yelling, trying to get Ryan's attention. Third down, and they're going to call a timeout here and uh, figure out what play they want to run. Oh, end of the first, first quarter, that's what it is, and so they're going to let that clock run down and Good start for that young man, though. So seven to six at the end of 15 minutes of football, and Washington State holding the advantage. Third down, they need almost 10. Long count by Lee. Quick toss, Tims, depends on the spot. And it's a first down with the spot. So Sean Tims out of Vallejo makes the catch, and the Cougar drive remains alive. Ryan Leaf with his six foot six stature, able to just see over the top. Ink Aliaga trying to put pressure, delivers the ball out in front, and you see Parrish not able to put the hit on. Chorak comes out from his defensive end position with good hustle, but not enough to stop the Cougars. And that's a, a big first down. Again, the wind behind them, see if they can take advantage of it. Ball at the midfield stripe. Cougars will try to put it on the ground, and Kwame Stewart will gain a yard, is all. Huskies really selling out against the run. I wouldn't be surprised again on this side of the field here. We're not quite to the hash mark, but the, the play action out of the counter was very effective the first time they ran it. Uh, fake the play action perhaps 
Again, look for the tight end because those linebackers will be coming hard trying to get a piece of Madu. Knuff in motion for Washington State. Play fake. Leaf buys time, throws into coverage, and it's incomplete. Oh boy. Pass interference gonna go against the dogs, and I'm I don't think that's a good call. I think the Cougs are getting a huge break there. Well, the initiation is made really by Bryant Thomas. Again, going the play action. Plenty of time to throw this ball over the top. And you'll see the contact as Thomas actually bumps into Malloy, Malloy there. And, and Thomas initiated the contact, but the officials are going to throw it the Cougs way, and we don't mind that a bit. Husky crowd certainly doesn't like it. Ball will be spotted now at the UW 34. UCLA leading USC 14 to nothing with a minute left in the first quarter of that one without Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Typical. UCLA has just absolutely had the one Trojans number. All right, Coons in a good spot on the field again with the win behind them. First down, split backs. Huskies bouncing around defensively. Cougars were moving, it looked like, and Kwame Stewart will pick up about a yard. Huskies really risking it all by bringing these guys upfield as fast as they are. Cougars had a chance to trap them and had the hole there. Kwame just got tripped up by Chorik again. But the Huskies selling out, bringing everybody, getting the gaps. Here's Coach Lambright. Dick Baird, his assistant, right next to him. No gain credited to Kwame Stewart on that one. Pressure, Leaf gets it away. Bryant Thomas the catch. It'll be a four-yard gain. Got a Cougar down, getting up awful slow. John Sakanik, who actually pulled a hamstring in practice earlier this week. You see him fighting. Might be a shoulder there, got caught up. Jensen, the linebacker, dropping down into his drop zone, his little hook zone there, and made a nice play. Bryant Thomas with his first catch of the day had three catches for 71 yards in the snow in Pullman a year ago as Mike Price and Brian Lee chat about things. When he showed his hand like that saying uh, you know the thing that I thought is show him the football when when Mike Price had his his hand up there and it may be that you know on this on this next play he's coming back saying show him the football and then run the quarterback draw. Uh, nice little play call here, third and about eight.
All right, see what the Cougars do now on a third and seven situation from the dog 31 yard line. Huskies lined up man to man, so that means blitz. Ryan's got to get this ball off. Now they come out of it. Leaf has a little time now, pressure, and he'll go down. Lost the football, but I think he fell on it. And that's a big sack because it takes the Cougars out of field goal range. Well, they had the perfect play set up, but he couldn't quite get off the screen pass. Devers comes from the backside, and he beats McShane, the new kid in there for the Cougars, and he just gets outside. Ryan's not able to deliver that ball, and lucky that it does come right back to him. But McShane, a little bit cold coming in, gives up the sack. Martin with the kick. He'll try to keep it out of the end zone and won't be able to. It hit on the four and skipped in. So Martin's punt will carry 42 yards, and the Huskies will start on their own 20. Well, the Cougars do do a good job of getting the ball out of their own end of the field and moving it down, and the field position now is relatively good for the Cougars as Damon Hewitt will have to bring out his offensive group and start from the 20 yard line. Disappointing though that the Cougars did not get. Well it's interesting the Huskies have not a lot of point off a of turnover in their last five games. This is game number six of that now after the Moore and Cola interception. That's a that's a pretty amazing statistic. Hewitt and the dogs are first down at their 20. She tries the middle and boy did he get drilled. Big Johnny Nansen filling in that spot. No and the guy his teammates call Coconut makes the big hit and he's got a smile. Well we saw him earlier where he dived inside the block. He does the same thing here and gets away with it. Jay Dumas talking to Mike Price about what they're doing in the secondary. Trying to figure it out over there on the sidelines with Ryan Leaf sitting down there. McWashington is other wide receiver. Chris Hayes still able to stick with it at the linebacker spot. Big Gary Holmes is in in the middle right now too. A couple of guys playing on gimpy legs. Three tight ends for the Huskies. Cougars come with the blitz. Pressure on Ewart. He gets it away and we'll get the completion. Gain of maybe a yard on that play as that was sent to Jeremy Bingham, the Brigham, the number three tight end for the Dogs. That's an interesting alignment. Three tight ends trying to get some movement again with the, the linebackers. Cougars force the throw, but great coverage there. Henderson drills him into the turf. Well, big play here now. The Huskies will try to convert a third and long. Last time this kind of situation, again, not real wild on the on the Husky side of it. Uh, they went to Sheehy. Let's see if they can try to get the ball to him again. Little screen, it's set up. They get it to Sheehy. He runs away from Darling, gets the first down, and is run out of bounds by Chris Hayes. Husky fans want a late hit. But the officials don't throw the flag. And a 19 on that one. Swing the ball wide again, using Sheehy's speed to get to the corner. Makes a nice catch and then puts a real good hesitation move on Darling. And uh, that allows him to get to the corner. Hayes, a little pop and say, oh, I'm sorry, coach. And Damon Heward is getting the congratulations. He'll get the football because he is now Surpass Sonny Six Killer as the all time passing leader here at the University of Washington. That might last another four years until his brother breaks it. Brock Heward, redshirt freshman here at the UW. A little polite applause from this Husky crowd that uh, spent a lot of time booing Damon also. They're pretty fickle over here. First down, 10 Huskies at the 40. They give it to Richard Thomas, and he's going nowhere. James Richard Darling and a couple Thomas other Cougars bottling it up. He was stopped at the 41, and the pile just kept moving. And they'll spot it at the 42. Here you see Big John Sakanik. He's uh, walking very gingerly on that left knee. Maha trailing him, making sure that uh, he's okay. He'll give him the green light to go in if uh, if John says I'm fine. There you see Daryl Jones, one of our two young freshmen in the middle. Gary Holmes wasn't expected to play much, but he's in there giving it his all. 
Second down, call it eight for the dogs. Heward gives it to Sheehy, tries to bounce it outside, and puts on that nice little stutter step move again. The Cougars string it out, gain of about two yards. Chris Hayes battling with Sheehy. Chris Hayes came from the blitz all the way up from the top of your screen. Chase Sheehy down, so his ankle seems to be doing quite fine. You'll see 22 in the background here coming all the way across. Watch, and there's no quit in there. Again, Cougars getting trapped up there a little bit. Wayne Sanders got to contain them. Make sure they don't get to that corner, but that's good defense here. Now brings up third and about six. Got a quick glimpse as Jay Dumas moved away. The 100 years of Cougar football patch. We'll try to get you another shot of that down the road if we can. Third down, six, Heward pass, first down. Into Cougar territory at the 45, Jerome Payton made the catch. The 5'11 sophomore out of Vancouver, British Columbia. Warren Cola given a lot of room here. Heward with a nice pocket to step into and delivers that ball. And Warren Cola with a nice hit afterwards, but a little bit too much cushion. The field's in good shape. And There's that look patch. at the WSU 100 years of football. I'd like to add a Cougar win on top of that patch here today. First down, Dogs at the Cougar 45. Heward pump fake, pressured, and he'll go down. And we got a hold as well, I believe. So that will give the Cougars a choice. It would be a loss of four, but I imagine the Cougars will take the hold penalty. Well, that time, trying to bite or get Morin Cola to bite after just throwing the out and not there. You see the hold on Casey. And Heward uh, not being too agile there, goes down without much of a hit. Pat Flood will tell us about it. He's telling us about it now. Didn't mean to. At least it wasn't like it, Cal. <laughs> well, they're going to mark wow. it. You can hear the discussion going on. Personal foul will be 15 after the down as well. So it should make it second and long instead of first and long. On the offense. Lambright's going to make a little note the there and say. Still first down. Now well, they're staying still first down, so they'll say it occurred during the play. Let's go down to the sidelines to Alex Webster. Thanks, bud. As has been happening with most of the senior class throughout the year, another senior for Washington State, John Sukanik, has gotten dinged up. They took a look at his left ankle on that one play that you saw that he went down. They took the tape off, took a good look at it. He got up on it, was walking around. It's still very painful, but it looks like he's going to be able to get back in there. They're going to retape him up and see how he feels. Back upstairs. Thank you, Alex. We'll keep an eye on John Sakanik. Hopefully, he'll be able to return. Rashawn Sheehy on the draw on first and 28 from the UW 37 following that penalty. Gain of nine for Sheehy. It'll be second and 17 now. Check it, make it 19. Second and 19 from the 46. Brandon Moore in the football game at the right outside linebacker position, and that's Chris Hayes' spot. Chris may have uh, re-injured that ankle. Uh, he went on it as long as he could, I believe. I don't see him on the sidelines. Got the helmet down. off right now, standing at the 45. We'll see if he's able to come back. Second and long, they want to throw that screen again. This time it's Richard Thomas who makes the catch, and he doesn't have the speed to get outside as he's dropped down. No gain at all on that play. Warren Cola with a nice job. Or, I'm sorry, Brandon Moore coming in, filling in for Chris Hayes. Did a great job of getting square and making a tackle. Again, they've had a lot of success with this little swing pass. This time it goes to Thomas, who does not, like you say, have the blinding speed that she he does. And that's a solid effort right there by the young linebacker. Again, part of this linebacking core that's going to be very strong coming back next year. That's a loss of a yard, so it's third and 20 now from the 45 for the Huskies. There you see the story. Cougs up by one with eight minutes left to play in the first half. Heward has a little time this time. Now guns it deep, and it is knocked away. Nice play by D. Moran Cola as he came around the backside and knocked it away from Jerome Payton. Well, last week against Stanford, they were able to get a couple of these long ones over the top of the Cougar secondary. Not much pressure. Gary Holmes coming on hard, but Brock or Brock here, Damon Heward puts the ball right there. Moran Cola, little contact there, but he swats that one away. No flag, and Huskies have to punt. Dumas sets up inside of the 20. Jeff Prince to kick it away. 
Nice play by Moran Cola filling in for Shad Hinchin who's got the big bruise. Cougars sitting back in a fairly prevent defense although you don't want to just allow them to pick you off 10 12 yards at a time uh, guarding against that sidelines. Heward the toss and has his man. Janoski makes the catch in Cougar territory at the 46. That'll stop the clock while they move the chains. Well, the Huskies are going to have to get down the field quite a bit farther. John Wales has not had a good year at all as the field goal kicker for the Huskies. And I think the Huskies have elected to call timeout. Heward pressured, has time, has his man, and overthrows. Rashawn Sheehy out of the backfield. He was open, and Heward knows it. Boy, mistake in the coverage. Cougars allowing Sheehy to come from his one back position right up the middle of the field, and he was wide, wide open, but Heward, the all time leading Husky quarterback as far as yards. Missed a bunch right there, and that would have been huge, almost reminiscent of last week where the Cougar defense gave up a big one. 19 seconds left, second down and 10. Huskies on the 44-yard line of Washington State. Heward guns it out. Pathon makes the catch, and they'll say he got out of bounds at the 38. So a short gain, but it stops the clock. 14 seconds left, so the dogs really, with, with the two timeouts, they might be able to get off two pass plays. Short. If they go into the end zone, they'll use up a little more time. Robert Booth comes out of the game. Shane Doyle, maybe a little bit better pass rusher, comes in at right defensive end. She he checks in for Richard Thomas. Three wide receivers: Coleman, Pathon, and Janowski. Moore and Colo matched up against Coleman. Cougars show blitz, and they get Heward to audible. And now the Cougars dance around. Heward guns it, and it's intercepted. Brandon Moore, what a great play by Brandon Moore. He got a hand on it and pulled it down, keeping the feet inbounds. Brandon Moore's first career interception as a Cougar. And Damon Heward, who had thrown only one pick in 195 Pac-10 attempts, has thrown two today. Well, you just can't say enough about this athletic play. Tip it up. Keep your feet in. He might have been out of bounds, but the referee, the, the head linesman is right there, and he makes the call. And there's the tip. And there's the right foot in bounds, so a good call. Great athletic play again by the linebacking crew for Washington State to stifle that threat. And Ryan Leaf will take a knee, so he might lose a yard in his rushing totals, but the Cougars aren't too worried about that because they have a 14-6 lead and a spattering of boos for the dogs as they leave. Nothing but cheers from the crimson-clad Cougar fans who have made their way to Seattle for this football game. The Cougars 14-6 over Washington at halftime.
Well, the Cougars come out with a little bit of time to get ready. And as the Cougars gather, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half of action. First half, first drive. Cougars able to get down to the one inch line and Ryan Leaf is just able to roll on over the top of his big center McCloskey for the first score. Tony Truant added on the extra point. And here again, you'll see the right and left guard are taking a step back to pass protect. And before they know it, Ryan Leaf is lumbering into the end zone, taking Malloy with him. So that again was a play that was all Ryan Leaf, no one else in the stadium knew about it. And Ryan Leaf fired up. Here's the Husky touchdown. Damon Heward giving it to Rashawn Sheehy. And Sheehy gets it in. That was on the heels of the 49-yard pass from Damon Heward to Dave Janoski on the flea flicker. And as I mentioned earlier, Damon Heward had only thrown just the one interception in Pac-10 play in 195 attempts. Here's his second interception of the day. Just a great play by Brandon Moore. Little tippy-toe on the sidelines and keeps it in. There's a look at Husky Stadium. The Cougars leading it 14 to six, and we're just about ready to begin the second half. Here we go, Tony Truant will kick it away for Washington State. And this ball will angle towards the sideline. Holloman will fumble it out of bounds. So the Cougars will get the break off of the problems by Terry Holloman. And the Huskies will start from their own seven yard line. That's the kind of start we're looking for. Come out there and botch went out of bounds in the corner. That's beautiful, keep it up. Tay Cleet, it's really fun to be down on the sidelines. The Cougars have a great attitude today, very relaxed, and they're really having fun. There's the quarterback that. comparison. Damon Heward, some pretty good numbers, but they don't sparkle compared to Ryan Leaf. The two interceptions hurting Heward. We'll see what sort of adjustments might have been made by the coaching staffs, although we might have to wait a while to see that for the Huskies, as on first down, Sheehy gets a pretty good little burst out to about the 15-yard line. Rashawn Sheehy in the first half, 41 yards. So after a seven yard gain, he's up to 48 now. Well, Sheehy has been the player that has performed so far for the Huskies, just dancing around, waiting for that hole to lighten up there, and he gets through it. Pretty good first down pick up down here close. Cooks have not been uh, playing well against the run. They got Sanders and Booth in there at the defensive end. They need to funnel those plays into those middle linebackers. Two tight ends for the Dogs in this formation. Sheehy bouncing around. He's got some room on the outside. Rashawn Sheehy at midfield. It's a foot race, and it's over. Touchdown, Huskies. Looked like he was trapped in the backfield. Cougars are all around. They absolutely have this place stuffed. Jones misses the tackle and he bounces the outside and no one's going to get him. Henderson tries to make a stab at him, but he's able to bootleg it down the sidelines and the Huskies now will try and go for two points. Sheehy does it on his own. Amazing play. Looked like it was all over in the backfield for the Huskies. Nobody wrapped him up. Squirts to the outside and gets it done. And that's a big play threat that he's able to bring. Huskies going for two. Richard Thomas in the backfield. Heward throws it into the end zone and threw it too high. So the Cougars hang on to the lead at 14 to 12.
point. McWashington at the 15. He doesn't go up the sideline, and he gets out to about the 27-yard line. So Ryan Leaf and the Cougar offense will make their way out. Again, Leaf in the first half, 9 of 13 for 128 yards. Frank Madu, 14 carries for 25 yards. Just got to make sure that you maintain possession of this football here on this drive. Take a little wind out of the sails, move it down. Use your strength and weight advantage on the offensive line. Madu on first down, and he will probably pick up about a yard because of the big push by the center, Mark McCloskey. Suki Wiggs was able to make the Emily first Flynn. hit. Frank Madu getting off the pile was upset that he was getting hit, and uh, there's a flag flying. Frank Madu's going to be guilty of the penalty here, I believe, the way that they're talking. Mike Price, this happened to us last week where we had a couple of penalties, personal fouls. Interrupted the momentum, I guess, in that third quarter when Stanford was able to take advantage of things. Scott Sanderson trying to sell things over there, putting his arm around the official, saying, I'm a lot bigger than you, pal. You could hear Frank Manu in the background over Pat Flood's microphone saying they were kicking me. And an ejection. They've ejected Frank Madu from oh the Oh, my game. goodness. Second wow. Down. Second down. And Mike Price is livid. He can't believe it. That is a tough call. And boy, I'll tell you, Cleet, you probably remember this. You have to go back to about what, 1984 when. The Cougars had a player rejected from the Apple Cup. Well, you know, I understand what the refs are doing, but you got to give a guy a chance. I mean, I, I can understand if this is his second violation or something like that, but, he, you know, he's getting beat up on the bottom of the pile. He gets up and pushes somebody, and they throw him out for that. Uh, that's, that's a little bit reactionary in my mind. There you see, you know, he's trying to get up, and guys are holding him down and pushing him around, and they get him for the punch. That's what he did. They got him for the punch. That ends Frank Madu's career at Washington State University. Yes, it does. And a sad way for that to end as Miguel Merriweather goes into the backfield now. Leaf gets rid of the football and has the catch by Chad Carpenter. Chad from Weezer, Idaho. Ryan Leaf has a lot of family here. He's got his uh, parents from Montana and a number of aunts and uncles from California flowing up for the game. Able to drift out of the pocket a little bit. Devers comes back and is going to sandwich him along with Wiggs, but he's able to hit the vacuum right in between Greenlaw and the linebacker, and that's just a great heads-up play. Really impressed with the poise that Ryan Leaf is showing here today in front of about 70,000. Third down and 10 now for the Cougars. Nobody in the backfield. Corner blitz. Leaf runs away from it. He's got a man if he can get it to him. There's Bryant Thomas. There's a flag down on the play in the area you'd expect holding. Huge hit by Jason Chorak for the Huskies. And Ryan, no, it's not Ryan Leaf. It's Ryan McShane is down injured. This is our second tackle at the right tackle position that is down. Ryan Leaf catches Scotty Greenlaw just out of, the, out of his corner of his eye and is able to move around him. Drifts by some time and makes a great throw across the grain. And then Thomas gets picked up. Unfortunately, it's all going to come back. Another great play by Ryan Leaf to Bernard as Jason Chorak really throws the elbow there, and Ryan Thomas able to hold on. Well, it's interesting as we were downstairs for a moment at halftime, a couple of Husky fans are saying, boy, these officials are just killing us. We're getting homered in our own house. I got to go talk to him. Well, he might have talked to him. Still third down. So that'll take it back again. Ryan Lee picked it up, but we got a hold from the spot of the foul. That'll bring it back to about third and 22. Ryan McShane, again, he is the number two at that position after Sukanik went down with the sore ankle. We'll see if big Rob Rainville, the redshirt freshman out of Lewiston, will come in and be flopped over to the other side.
third and 26. Not a pretty situation for Ryan Leaf and the Cougar offense. One back in the backfield. And it is not Frank Madu. If you missed it a couple of minutes ago, he was ejected from the game. It's Miguel Merriweather who picks up some pretty good yardage Miguel and then slips. So George Martin will have to come on and punt for Washington State. But Merriweather got out far enough there's he got some, some distance to work there. Got George Martin out of the end zone on this punt. I couldn't have said it better myself. Hey, you know, you know, I may be looking for an alternate occupation sometime. <laughs> well, this, this is not bad, and you're in out of the rain. You're hired. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know better than that. A wide snap. Martin fields it, kicks it off the side of his foot, and let's see what kind of a bounce it's going to take. A little bit of a cougar bounce. That will see that football settle down near the 35, and we've got another injured Cougar. Reggie Reeser is standing over an injured Cougar player at the 22, and I'm not quite sure which Cougar it is. It may be George It's Ken, Ken Moore is who Ken it is. Moore. And Reggie Reeser trying to get somebody out. He's pointing to his shoulder. He thinks that Moore might have separated a shoulder. And that's an injury that, boy, I tell you, it hurts when that first happens. Yeah. I'll tell you what, now, is it the slipperiness of the field that's causing this part of these problems? Uh, it's uh, just the law of averages catching up that you, you run into enough people hard enough over time, and ligaments and shoulders and knees are going to go away. And unfortunately, Ken is, must have got popped pretty good. Reggie Reeser knew right in, right away that he was hurting big time and okay, I see they, they've got him up and he's coming off. Well, sometimes those shoulders they'll pop out and they hurt like heck and as soon as you get them back it's like a breath of fresh air and you're fine and go out and play again. <laughs> uh, maybe you do. Maybe you do. Uh, <laughs> at, my, at my age it don't, doesn't work quite that way. I hope you can still hear us. The Husky band is directly below us. Kind of drowning things out a little bit. It'll I, be first that, down. That's the closest they can get to a fight song. <laughs> From the 34, Damon Heward and Rashawn Sheehy. Sheehy finds a little hole and finally is run down by Washington State. And just a great second effort by Sheehy on his last carry, going 85 yards, really turning this football game around. Huskies uh, three tight end alignment, just going to try to pop it up the middle. And the really nice bit of dancing that Sheehy does to avoid the loss. Second down, about six now. Washington State would like to get some penetration, maybe cause a turnover here at this end of the field. Thomas in the backfield, along with Sheehy now. Play action. Heward has time. And throws it to Janoski, who's wide open, breaks a tackle. Janoski inside the 25 to the 23, and the Huskies have gained the momentum. Play action pass buys Damon Hewitt a lot of time here. Not any penetration. Linebackers are picked up, and Janoski rounds a post corner, completely turns Brian Walker around, and then a couple poor attempts at tackles. Chris Hayes on his bad ankle has to chase him down. First down to the Huskies on the Cougar 23 yard line. Huskies up to 130 yards of total offense in this second half already. Sheehy will try to bounce it outside. This time he's dropped for the loss. And we got a very late flag thrown in. And we'll see where that comes from. Well, you got to believe that's a holding call, even though it was extremely late. The official runs over and marks the flag where the spot of the infraction was. And that'll go back 10 yards. So the Huskies uh, have been threatening a couple times on drives and self-destructed via interceptions and penalties. Been a busy time for Pat Flood and his group. We'll get a chance to listen in. It'll be, it'll be the spot of the foul, right? Okay, take him back. Take him back. Okay. James well, Darling says, take it back. So it'll be from the 19. So they'll move it back. Or rather, from the 24. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. The two first down. So they'll move it back to the 34. It'll be 
a second or first and 21. Just curious, Sam, I, I know I have my favorites on team. Any of these seniors that you've got to know that uh, have a special place in your heart? Well, I'll tell you what, I've gotten to know most of the, most of the ones here. I'd hate to single out any one, but I'll, I'll tell you very frankly, I, I go on most of the team uh, trips. I've gotten to know most of the kids on it. We've got a first class group of seniors going out this year that we can be very proud of. Heward to throw that little screen pass out to Sheehy. And a great job of staying home that time by Brandon Moore, who really has stepped up and playing a fine ball game. Only a gain of a yard on that play, and Sheehy a little gimpy on the ankle. Athletic ability sometimes is more than running and throwing here. Brandon Sanders slips and falls down. You see him scrambling up, gets nice and square, and is able to wrap up the legs of Sheehy. And, uh, you know, sometimes athletic ability is, is being to get off your knees and make a play. Did a nice job there filling in again for, for Chris Hayes, who's got a little bit of tenderness on his ankle. He, he really managed to play that one beautifully. He just he stayed right in there. Thomas in the backfield as Heward goes to the audible. Hands off to Thomas on the draw. Thomas with some running room, and the pile continues to move. Thomas just won't go down. Listen to this Husky crowd saluting Richard Thomas as he got down to the 20. Well, the Huskies taking a page by spreading out the field with wide receivers and then getting a nice block in the middle. Jones getting moved off the ball. Stewart comes up to try to make the tackle, and then Casey and some of the other offensive linemen come up and just move that pile down. Third and eight now. This is a huge play for the Cougar defense. Need to stop them here. Right. Kicking into that win. Wales is not much of a field goal kicker. You'd like to stop them. Sheehy directly behind Heward. Pressure. Heward gets it away. And it's incomplete. Good pressure on the blitz from the outside. I believe that was Moore, Brandon Moore, coming from the outside linebacker spot. And the Husky fans are upset because the dogs are bringing the kicking team on. Well, third and eight, fourth and eight now. As you see Brandon coming around the corner, and, and Damon just lets this one fly out of bounds. He, again, hasn't had a real sharp performance today against the Cougars. He did have the last pass to Janoski that moved him down the field here, but that one goes out of bounds quite a ways. 38-yard attempt. The longest of the year for Wales is from 36. Fortney the hold. He's got the distance, and he got it. John Wales, longest field goal of the year, puts the dogs on top, 15 to 14. Wales kick, a high kick that Moore and Cola will field. Now McWashington will take it at the 12. And he's hit, buried under it about the 22. So the Huskies playing with some renewed spirit now. And Washington State will bring the offense out. The Huskies have been dominating in the third quarter. The last three games coming into this one, they'd outscored opponents 63 to 8. And now make that 66 to 8, including today's game. And the Cougars will try to answer. There's the numbers on Ryan Lee. And now's the time for him to improve those numbers and bring them up a little bit and show the Cougar fans some real speed here. Two tight ends, Merriweather in the backfield. Knuff drops into the H back, goes in motion. We got all kinds of motion. Well, those are the things that uh, had hurt him on the last drive. Just a, a little miscue by your left tackle Sanderson. He jumps a little bit early, and Pat Flott will mark him back five yards. And 
Again, this is the area of the field. You've really got to get a first down and, and give yourself some breathing room. This will take it back to about the 12-yard line. 17-yard line here, and uh, they'll start the drive now first and 15. Six penalties on Washington State for a total of 45 yards in this game. Ryan Leaf looking at the play plays on his wristband after it signaled in. Okay, now's the time to pull one out right here. Same formation as Knuff goes in motion. Play fake. Time. And it looks like a completion or not. Nope. David Knuff couldn't hang on. Well, it looked that time as Ryan goes with the counter. He's got room to run up there and almost hand this ball. The Huskies selling out inside, and you can see there's a lane, clear lane, to throw that thing, and uh, David's just not quite able to come up with that football. Unfortunately, because that would have been a first down, first and 15. Now we go to second and 15. Trips to the left, the bottom of your screen for Washington State. Husky show blitz. Merriweather, little room, and gets out to the 26-yard line. So Merriweather, a good gain on second down. Young man out of West Covina, California, came in as a quarterback, converted to running back, and actually took some snaps at quarterback in practice this week. Hmm. Straight ahead, zone blocking, able to get to the corner. Bryant Thomas does his part as the wide receiver. They pick up half of that 15 yards. Third and sixth, uh, I can't tell you how big this play is. Ryan, Ryan Lee's done a great job. Uh, McShane is back in there at the right tackle, so he's able to shake off that injury. Leaf time, throws it, open as Tims, makes the catch in Husky territory. He'll be down at the 44. That's fabulous catch. Great pass and a fabulous catch there. Sean Tim's been a big play receiver all year long. That's a combination, Sam, that we'll be fortunate to see for quite a while here. <laughs> nice. I, I can't help but think that maybe we're seeing a little bit of what's going to happen next year. Sean Timms, the sophomore out of Vallejo with the catch. His second of the day, 30-yard gain. Cougars with a first down at the Husky 44. Merriweather bounces it back, stays on his feet, hey. battles close to a first down. Mike Iwaliko, 88, at the end of that play, just absolutely sticks his helmet into the back here on a spear. I'm surprised they didn't call it. Nice bit of blocking as they cave it down McCloskey. And then Miguel selling out for his buddy Frank Madu. As you can see, the helmet going in there at the end actually didn't get him, got his own. Hit his own guy. <laughs> he was close. He was close. Second and one. Great play call opportunity here if the Cougars elect to go with the play action. Knuff. Goes in motion. Play fake. Leaf goes down. Great play by Jason Chorak. Ryan Leaf's a little shaken up as his left knee is a little bit sore after that tackle, and he's walking over the sidelines. Hopefully, he's just shaking it off. You see, Chorak gets inside position. Ryan is trying to decide, and you see how that knee buckled in there a little bit. Unfortunately, he's big, strong, and young that that didn't give way, but boy, that scared me. First down, 10 for the Dogs from their own 20. Six minutes to play, third quarter. Sheehy's got it. Shoestring tackle. Rashad Sheehy, the long career. Again, Brandon Moore filling in, making sure that Sheehy is not able to escape for another 80 yards. I think he was bound and determined he wasn't going to see him going down the field. Didn't want to chase him. Did not want to chase him. Knocks those feet right out from underneath him. Gee, he's not a big back, but he's got very good speed and good balance. Brandon Moore, Darling, Nansen remaining in the linebacking core for Washington State. Second and eight for the Dogs. Heward. Wants the screen. Cougars have it snuffed out. Heward throws it away. That's a good play. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's a good play. Rather than have that thing intercepted, he dumped it out there. 
Our fellows really got in there very fast on them and put the pressure on them. That was the first time that we've really forced Damon to uh, to panic a little bit and <laughs> and break down the the pass routes. He's trying to just dump the ball off there, but the Cougars are right there. Again, another big third down play. Like to get the ball right back into Ryan Leaf's hands. He's shown he can move the offense. James Darling, the signal caller for the defense, like to get another lick on Sheehy here. Oh, I think that would be a fabulous thing to happen right about now. The third and eight. Trevor Highfield to get it to Heward. Janoski, a big catch. That's a first down. Just getting enough for the first down. Jason Stroman in there trying to get pressure up the middle. But uh, Janoski able to come that one. Nansen, that's his little flat out there. Just not quite able to get his hands up and knock that one away. Turning into a big day for Dave Janoski. First down Huskies from the 31. Huskies lining up in the three tight ends. Sheehy's got it. And he's not going anywhere. Not far at all. Robert Booth in there. Brandon Moore again. Robert Booth and Gary Hall He's trying to do what the Cougs have been doing with the, the heavy jumble lineup. Three tight ends. Robert Booth says, I'll have that football, please. But he won't give it up. Rashawn Sheehy with 140 yards rushing in this football game. 85 on one carry. Second down. A long seven. Fumble on the snap, and Heward is able to cover it. The Cougars were showing blitz, and in fact, Brandon Moore did come from the linebacker spot, and he was the first guy to cover Heward. Boy, that was a lucky bounce as Damon comes out of there without the football, and it comes right back up to him. You'll see it go down, and a lot of times that thing will take funny bounces, and he just is fortunate to fall on it and they avoid a big bullet there because the Cougars had the linebackers Darling and Brandon Moore coming after it. 335 left in the third quarter. Again another huge third down play. They're all big in this football game. Keep an eye on Dave Janoski. He's in motion. Heward goes the other way. Tatum makes the catch. First down. No they say he didn't have the ball. When he dove oh. He landed out of bounds with his upper body, and that's what they're calling is that when he lands, his upper body is outside the out of bounds line here. Heward just stands, delivers strong, and you watch his upper body float in, and the knees come down after he's caught that football. Hey, that was not a popular call with a crowd around here. Well, that's okay. We don't mind that. <laughs> you see, he's going to land with that right. Boy, I don't body agree with that call. The there. knee was down first. I think, I think that was a catch. Cougars get a break there. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Low snap. Prince gets it away. Side of his foot. Dumas, fair catch. Cougars will have good field position. So as Dr. Smith alluded to a while ago, the field position is starting to sway towards Washington State. Now they give, give Ryan Leaf that ball here a little bit and uh, get another drive put together. We can get that thing down where we need to get scoring position. Well, they've been able to run the ball pretty well. Uh, Merriweather filling in for the ejected Frank Madu. And uh, he was very and ejected, I'm sure, too. Okay, it looks like the rain slowed down a little bit here, but it's starting to get a little dark here in the stadium. Just be glad we're undercover. I have a feeling that's getting pretty wet and slippery out there. Need to flick the lights on the switch. Switch on the Cougar offense, get him in the end zone. Five wide receivers, no backs for Ryan Leaf. Quick toss to Tim's over the middle, running room. And he's Tim's. going. He is good, good gun. Third catch of the day for Sean Timms, and that's another Cougar first down. <laughs> you heard it from the president. <laughs> nice bit of work by Ryan Leaf, recognizing the coverage and the linebacker blitz, man to man in the secondary, and Wolf has to come over. Otherwise, Tim squirts through for a touchdown there as Scott Greenlaw's back was to the football. He would have just run right behind him, tapped him on the shoulder, and said, I'm gone. Trips to the left for the Cougars now. Merrowweather in the backfield. Leaf 
changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He'll throw on the out. Kearney Adams the catch. So the senior out of Gilbert, Arizona, gets a catch in his final game as a Cougar. The wet ball not affecting Ryan Lee. He's able to deliver that ball with excellent accuracy all day. Hasn't really thrown a bad pass. He's going to take the three-step drop and deliver, and even though it's a little wobbly, hits him right there in the chest, and that's a good grab by the senior, Kearney Adams, playing in his last football game for Washington State. Leaf now 13 of 19 in this game for 197 yards. Trips to the right. Adams comes in motion. Second and four, Merriweather, delayed handoff, bounces it outside, now inside, and he'll come close to getting the first down. Might have it. Depends on the spot, but it looks like he might be, he might have it. I have a feeling we're gonna get, no, they're moving the chain. Moving the chain. He's got quick feet. He's got very good feet. Ricky Austin caves it down. Kaika Malloy acts like the bullfighter and waves him on by. Nice bit of balance by Merriweather, who's showing that there's a future in that backfield for Washington State next oh, year. That looks pretty good. First down at the 30. Play action. Leaf. Time. Throws deep. Wide open. Kearney Adams. Touchdown. Touchdown. Washington. Touchdown. That's fabulous. I'll tell you what, that did seem to change the tenor of the crowd around here just a little bit. Just a little bit with the crimson and gray clad umbrella waving Cougars loving what they see. Here you see the play action, Merriweather, great block by McIndoe up top, and the wheel route leaves Kearney Adams all alone, and he keeps his feet right to the pylon. I'll tell you what, he was he was trying to throw that weight back inside there. That was getting closer. Looks like the Cougars are going to go for two, leading here 20 to 15. They'll try to build it to a seven-point lead if they can convert the two-point conversion. Well, the folks at the branch campuses and at the at the headquarters in Pullman got to like what Ryan Leaf is oh, able yes. to do. Whether a little bit of the knockout punch the Huskies tried to throw at us, come right back and deliver. The touchdown score here, two points, five wide receivers. Leaf, the quick drop. Reeds can't find anybody. He's going to try to run for it. Still throws. Two, two points. Two points. It's good. Hey, I, I hate to tell you, but I think some of the Cougar folks here have gone slightly crazy. Now the grip I see across from us, the Huskies really don't seem to be enjoying the true tenor of this game. Uh, I don't understand their lack of uh, enjoying spectacular football. Now they, they seem to enjoy football and cheer quite regularly. I thought they might like this. Ryan Lee scrambling around, trying to find somebody, knows he's not going to get in, and just elects the worst of, or the better of two options there and, and punch it into Chad. Chad makes a nice catch with Huskies draped all over. Tony Truant to boot it away. Down to the three. This is Coleman who gets a chance. And Coleman is wrapped at the 22. And Damon Hewitt and the Huskies will come back out. Have we ever had a college football game called on account of darkness? We could have it here today. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got a flashlight out in the car I could bring in. That might be helpful on it. Hey, if they got to call it because of darkness right now, we'll take the win. And, uh... Hey, that's right. And, and we, don't have, we don't have to have a rain day on this, do we? No. Now back on the defense. Let's see if they can take a little bit of this momentum that's been delivered to them and create another turnover. Give the offense another shot. Damon Eward with Sheehy in the backfield from the 23. Long count. Still plenty of time on the play clock. Eward the quick toss. Janoski the catch. His fifth of the game, and that's about an eight-yard gain. Janoski in the slot is uncovered. Damon Eward. 
looks up, sees that he can just pop it out to him for a five or six yard carry. And little guy, leading receiver for the Huskies, moves it forward for about eight yards. Janoski out of Corona, California. Huskies back with the three tight end look now, just threatening to, we're in Sheehy territory here. He's got the ball, finds a little hole and has the first down. He gets a couple steps going there. He, he seems to be taking about half the team with him. Just more like rugby or something out there. Good push that time from the Husky right side. Trevor Highfield, the center, comes out and gets a piece of Darling. And uh, he's able to just sit in the hole, wait for things to open up. We need to get a little penetration out of our two young freshmen, Holmes and Jones. UCLA continues to lead USC 21-14. Fourth quarter just underway there. Stanford and Cal tied at 17 in the third quarter of the big game down in the Bay Area. Sheehy will try to kick it outside. Gets hit by Brian Walker and survives that hit, and then run out of bounds by Dwayne Stewart. Just don't like to see him get into the corner at all. <laughs> Leon Neal, the starter. Most of the season for the Huskies at tailback is on the sidelines in a cast, his toe bothering him all year. Sheehy able to elude one man, can't elude them all. Brian Walker, the beautiful play, that'll be a loss of about a half a yard. And that will be the final play of the third quarter. And it looks like that rain's coming back yeah. in again on us, bud. It was raining at halftime, and now it's raining at the end of the third quarter, but it's not raining on the Cougar Parade as Washington State has a 22 to 15 lead with 15 minutes of football remaining here. The Huskies have picked up a couple of big first downs in this situation. The last time looked like they had it. Jerome Pathan ruled out of bounds. This is, this is a big one. This is time to hold them right here. Cougars show blitz. Let's see if they come after Heward. They do from the outside. Picked up by the dogs. They throw it deep for Coleman, and it's incomplete. Oh. Husky fans want an interference. The officials say no. no. Well, well, I'm on the side of the officials. They obviously look like very intelligent people down there. This Cougars come up and challenge, go man to man, saying, Damon Heward, we're going to make you beat us with the long ball. The wind might have just taken this out of reach. There was a little contact. A little bit of contact. <laughs> Coleman not able to come up with the football. One thing, the Huskies have run a number of trick plays under Jim Lambright. Would they try the fake punt here? Snap goes back to Prince. He's going to kick this one. Cougars got pretty good pressure on him, and he roots it. Drives Dumas back to the 12. Dumas trying to get outside and gets out to about the 19. And with that punt return, Jay Dumas, I believe, now with the same number of career punt returns as another guy who did some great things and went on to play in the NFL, Kittrick Taylor. So Jay Dumas is uh, just an absolute treat of an individual. Great attitude, always has enjoyed playing the game of football. It's great to know that his name will be in the record books, at least for a while. Now. All right, right. One of those fellows that has been really putting out for us the whole time, and he's quite a talented athlete, but he never quits. Great representative. Two tight ends for okay, Washington let's bring State. bring it on down the field now. Cougars would love to use up some clock here. Merriweather in the backfield. Cut off in motion. Merriweather, Chorak, got him in the backfield. Whoops. Again, Jason Chorick jumping inside of the motion man, David Knuff. Looked like the snap might need to come a little bit earlier to allow Knuff to slow down his momentum to turn that corner and make that block because they've been jumping inside of him all afternoon. And they just get that one step in there and then they're off. Huskies will play the remainder of the game without Lawyer Malloy. He is injured, toe injury, won't come back. Leaf still has it. He throws deep. 
Oh. Incomplete. Sean McWashington laid out for it, but that one had to be thrown away from the defense and put it in a position where only McWashington could make the catch. Well, this ball is exactly right, but you got to throw it away from that free safety. Good play action. You see the linebackers sucking up, and this ball is thrown outside the other shoulder. That's a great effort by McWashington, and uh, just didn't get the safety to bite on the play action pass. 30-15 now. Cougars would like to at least gain some yardage here to get Martin out of the end zone. Lee, pressure, gets it off. No. Oh, Threw it behind Bryant Thomas, who was trying to come back and slip. Well, we'll see if the top punter in the Pac-10 can kick the Cougars out of some trouble here. Ryan Lee just shows me a lot of maturity for a kid who's really only starting his second football game. Redshirt freshman just able to stand back there and not worry about the rush. I, you know, I'll get this ball rid of it when when I'm ready. Bud was saying he looks a lot like you out there. This is got a bright future. <laughs> Mac can do the snap. And Martin kicks a high knuckleball. Janoski will field it, slip a tackle, and get outside. Janoski has room to roam. There's a penalty flag as Janoski goes down. The flag is back at the 42. That one's coming back. That, that one's going to be. That one's not going to be all the way down the field. You can tell that right now. now. I'm not sure if that one's coming back or not. Let's watch this. Here's more missing the tackle. And uh, there's the hold right there. That's what they're calling on Reggie Reeser. <laughs> you saw <laughs> the Brian Thomas or Justin Stallings. <laughs> Justin Stallings, I believe, was just saying, "Hey, wait a minute." He, he had everything but a suitcase handle on there with a with a baggage tag on it. <laughs> well, they'll march it back into Husky territory. Coach Lambright asking questions of the officials. Uh, yeah, he seems to be somewhat upset there. Huskies will take over just inside the 50 yard line on their side of it. Talk about field position again. They able to get the Cougars to go three downs and out and have great field position to start this drive. Conwell the tight end on the right side of the line. Janoski in motion. Reverse to Janoski. He wants to throw it and he throws it for Coleman and it is incomplete. <laughs> Dwayne Stewart got a hand and a cast on it and Coleman I thought might have had a chance to catch it. And I think he thinks the same thing. All three of them went up and all three thought they had the ball. Well, Cougars don't fall for the trick play this time. Janoski lobbing the ball out there probably shouldn't have thrown it. Stewart catches this ball if he doesn't have that huge. Oh. Huge cast, huh? cast and uh, great effort by Coleman. But listen, just to be out there playing with a cast like that and doing what he's doing, he may not have caught it. That, that wasn't bad. Second and ten for Damon Heward and the Huskies. Cougars show blitz. They don't come after Heward. He wants Sheehy on the screen. Sheehy the catch. Can he make a move? Yes, he can. Brandon Moore gets him at the 46 of Washington State. It'll set up a third down. Okay, here we are, another big third down, third and five. Looks like they finally turned the lights on out there. Damon Heward trying to entice Brandon Moore to make a mistake, but he's played this play about as well as you can all afternoon. Got to make sure you funnel Rashawn back into the inside. Don't let him get down that sideline. Yeah, but if he gets down that sideline, he's away. Third and five. Huskies missed on their last third down try when the Cougars came with a blitz. Moore moves over to the side. Here he comes. The quick pass for the tight end, Cleveland, who makes the catch and goes out of bounds. So a first down for the Dogs as Cam Cleveland makes the catch out of Cedro Woolley. Cam goes in motion, comes across right behind Damon and just makes his way out to the first down. Nice catch for the big guy. Sometimes you hope maybe the iron hands will show up, but they're able to haul that one in. So big down third, third down conversion for Heward. 209 yards passing in the football game now for the Huskies. 
Sheehy on first down. And will fall forward for about two, maybe three yards. 13 minutes left to play in this football game. Washington State leads it 22 to 15. Cougars trying to make it two in a row and three of the last four against the Huskies. And win here in Seattle for the first time since 1985. Here's a spot in the field that if you're an offensive coordinator, you like to take a shot at a long one. Got Coleman, Pathon, Janowski, Conwell flanked out from his tight end position with Richard Thomas in the backfield. He ordered the straight drop. And now That's he is exactly what he drop. did. That's exactly what he did. Good call, bud. I don't think that's quite what they had planned on that one. Well, it worked out well for Coach Doba. He came up and challenged the Husky wide receivers. Again, the bump and, bu bump and run situation <laughs> and took it away. Big Gary Holmes with that right knee all bandaged up, puts on pretty good pressure and just falls right on top of Damon, keeps him there. That was bump and run pressure, but uh, rump and bun on the tackle. <laughs> Third down and 10 now. Now remember, this is a family program. This is... Cougars come with a blitz. Heward, he'll go down no. again. Oh, back at the 45 yard. Wait a minute, there's a play. Might be a face mask against Washington State. It would be from the spot of the foul, however, which would not give the Huskies a first down. But it would give, would them, give them another play. Another down on third down. So unfortunately, yeah, it might mask. be a five yarder. Let's see. It's a five yarder. Mike Price wants to put another cast on Dwayne Stewart's other hand, because yeah. <laughs> that's the one that got the penalty. You've seen the rain really coming down. Here you see he's coming in, just gets a hold of the face mask, and that's really unfortunate. Didn't have to do that. All he had to do is make sure that he doesn't throw the ball, and you can see the, I didn't yep. do it. As soon as you throw your hands up like that, you know he's guilty. Yep. So instead of being marched off from the spot of the foul, it's from the original line of scrimmage, as you see big Gary Holmes having to walk off. He's played longer on that knee than the Cougars really thought he'd be able to. Well, you got to appreciate that effort, and he's going to walk it off. And, you know, he knows it's the last game of the season, and he wants to get in there and get as much as he can. Like Mike Price says, last time you get a chance okay, to third, hit a Husky. Third, third and four. This is the time to hold him here. Three tight ends. Thomas in the backfield. Thomas has got it, and he doesn't have the first down. We got another flag. Oh, no, here. no. This time it's holding. This time it's holding on the Huskies. Well, then that's all, that's all right. Then that yellow doesn't look so bad on that green team. Cougars have to be careful to get those. They dance around. Yeah, we actually heard it's like the NFL. That's on Cam Cleveland that time. Chuck, is this a spot back here? Yeah. So they'll probably take them back because this is, uh, again, with this rain coming down, you don't know how anybody could kick a field goal, period. There you see Cleveland just absolutely tackling Johnny Nansen, and the official saw it and called it. And so they'll take it back 10 yards, put it on about the 41 yard line. Well, now there's no possibility that he can drive the field goal from there, is it? Nope, not from here. Third Call it down. a loss of 11 on the penalty and make it third and 15. Third down again. And, uh, Washington State now has to decide, do we come with the blitz? Do we risk giving up a big player? Do we sit back and kind of a prevent and say, hey, with this rain coming down, they're not going to be able to throw the ball as effectively. That'd be my choice. Just go ahead and sit back, keep things in front of you. Cougar personality is the blitz, though. Let's see if they do. They at least get Heward to audible. And now and he, they back off. And now Heward calls timeout. <laughs> well, the thing the that, chess match the continues. Thing, the thing that they were able to do is get Damon to check out of that particular passing play he had called. And he checked to a play that was something that would have been like an eight yard hitch or an out route that wouldn't have got him the first down. He decided, hey, I better, better call timeout. I think that term is called psyching him out. Would that be the way of phrasing it? A little bit of everything. There's Mike Price on the Cougars sideline. Managers had a big packing job to do this week. They had to pack all sorts of gear to take care of these guys in the event of rain, which we now have. 
Well, it was actually real nice this morning. <laughs> how quickly it changes. Damon Hewitt will bring his guys out for their third shot at third down here. I'll tell you, they seem to be having that ball long enough that they're going to hatch it if it keeps going this way. Third and 15 for Hewitt. Sheehy's in the backfield along with Thomas. Thomas probably to stay in and block for Hewitt. As does Sheehy. Hewitt steps up, throws deep, double coverage. It's caught! Steve Janoski took it away from Brian Walker. Much like last week, just throwing up the prayer, hoping that your guy comes down with it. Janoski is the smallest player of the guys going after this football. Stewart's in good position. You see the little bumping going on. And it goes right through the hands of Walker for the touchdown. Really unfortunate for Brian Walker because he had it played perfectly. All he had to do, quite frankly, was knock it down. That's right. But Janoski comes up with the play. The Huskies now down by one are electing to go for two points here. They fail on an earlier attempt at a two-point conversion. Huskies thinking that if they win and Oregon loses, they can go to the Cotton Bowl. They don't want to settle for a tie. Cougars show blitz. Janoski in motion. Hewards toss. Caught Jerome Payton. The Huskies have the lead. motion clears out underneath. Warren Cola is behind again. The receiver with position wraps it up for the two pointer. Huskies jump on top now by a point. Plenty of time though left in this football game. We're we're set for an action pack end of this football game. Now we just need Ryan Leaf to bring that ball down the field. Do what he's done the last couple of times. Put that thing in the end zone. Aaron Price special teams coach. You don't think they're going to try to we're going to try to run that one back right like Absolutely. That, what they ought to be careful of is an onside kick because Jim Lambright has had his guys execute an onside kick at strange times throughout the season. So the Huskies go 51 yards six plays two minutes and 45 seconds and a two point conversion to take the lead. John Whale set to kick it off. What a game this has been. I'll tell you what, Devlin, coming into this game with a supposedly a 13 point differential, it sure doesn't look like that. Well, the unfortunate thing about that last drive is the Cougars had him pinned back third down 15, and they let one get away. Brian Walker's in perfect position to swat that ball away, but just somehow squeaked through there. And Janoski fell into the end zone with a prize. McWashington and Warren Cola deep to accept the kick from Wales. The wind has virtually died right now. And it appears to have stopped raining for the moment. Line drive kick that will go a couple of yards deep and it's actually Miguel Merriweather who's back there and he'll set it down. So the Cougars will come out at their own 20. You know, the, the confidence that Ryan Leaf has instilled into the Cougars, I'm thinking, you know, now eh, it's no big deal. We got Leaf back here and uh, we got can move him downfield. We got Leaf back here. We got 10 minutes and 51 seconds. Let's just bring it on down. This is a spot of the field where the Husky fans can make a difference. It gets very noisy in the horseshoe end. Don't check off. Stick with the play you got called. Merrowweather will get a couple is all. Well, 
Just need to get a first down here. Take a little bit of wind out of the Husky sail. Calm them down a little bit, get that crowd out of it a bit. I think Ryan McShane in at the right tackle spot. John Sakanic injured earlier. McShane was hurt, but has been able to return. Second and eight. Just over 10 minutes to play in the Apple Cup 1995. Leaf time throws, oh. has the catch, and it'll be spotted at about the 26 yard line. He grabbed that, and those two Huskies tried to tear him east off. Sean McWashington, the catch. Might want to lay, wait it for this to develop a little bit later than it does, trying to come underneath and run that play right into the teeth of the zone defense. That's a great play against man-to-man. -man. Not so effective against the zone. A big play here, Cougars, third down, about four. Five wide receivers. Ryan Leap has been great today on third down conversion. See if he can pull another rabbit out of the hat. Watch for the quarterback draw, perhaps. Leap will be dropped oh. down the sack. Came in on Husky. the backside there. Scotty Greenlaw lines up a lot in that corner blitz position and he'll come to the backside of Ryan. He doesn't see him until it's too late, and then he has nowhere to run. And the Huskies snuff out the Cougar drive. Three plays and out. George Martin will have to punt from deep, again, the 10-yard line's where he's standing. Fourth sack of the afternoon for the Huskies. Janoski, who's having a great game, 162 yards receiving, back to accept the punt. And Martin only caught part of that one, but it sails pretty well. Janoski makes the catch and stays on his feet. Janoski. Is that a flag yep. or a pad? Flag or a pad at the 35. This could be the second return in a row by Janoski that's been a good one that'll be pushed back because of a penalty. Got another holding here on the Huskies, but still they'll be in good field position on the 45 yard line to start another drive here in the fourth quarter. Dr. Smith can't stand the excitement. He's going to bail out on us. Enjoyed our stay with you, Doc. You got a, got a job here if you need it. Janoski able again to squirt through a couple tackles. And Philip Glover has to polish him off. The hole to bring it back to the 44-yard line where Heward takes over. There's the penalties, 85 yards on the Cougar side. Three tight ends, they give it to Sheehy, and he's able to fall forward, a gain of two, maybe three. Still plenty of time, but the Cougars will want to snuff the Cougar, the Huskies here to protect field position. Sheehy's talking to Conwell there, saying, hey, I got everything I could out of that hole. Not much there. Cougars have done a pretty good job of containing Sheehy with the exception of the one run where he bolted for 85, when in fact on that play had been bottled up. Big day for Sheehy, 19 carries, 158 yards. Heward, play action. Has all kinds of time and throws it way too high for his receiver. So now another third and long for the Huskies. Third and eight now for the dogs. Slippery ball may be coming into play there. You can see the field is a little bit wet, starting to reflect these lights. 18 out of 30. Two interceptions. Cooks like to add uh, one more on there right here, maybe take it for a touchdown. Third down play, third and eight for the Huskies at the Cougar 42-yard line. Ball's on the right hash, and they'll send Huskies are six of 13 on third down conversions. The last one for a big touchdown. Heward pressured by Nansen, gets it off to the tight end Cleveland. Cleveland breaks a tackle and has the first down. So the drive remains alive for the Huskies. Johnny Nansen comes and puts all sorts of pressure on Heward, who has to just float this ball out there to Cleveland, who makes a nice adjustment. 
Got to have that tackle right there by Henderson to stop the first down. Not able to bring the big load down. Huge first down pickup for the Huskies. Gain of 11. 265 pounds, Cam Cleland. There's the story. Huskies, if they can get a field goal, could force Washington State into having to get it into the end zone to come back in this game. Sheehy tries to bounce it outside as a blocker. Runs into three Cougars at the 25, but a gain of six. Cougars had shut down the hole. But she's able to adjust his feet, square to the line of scrimmage. There's Darling just waiting for him. Henderson trying to come up and pursue, but he's the free safety. And you see, she, he's a tough one to bring down. Huskies up to 431 yards of offense now. Cougars just under 300. Second down and four for the Huskies. Heward, the quick toss out. Nobody saw it. Well, here we go again. Third down again, Cleet. That was a, a terrible throw that time by Damon Heward. It was way behind Janoski, who's running the out route. Morin Cola had a shot at that football, and perhaps watch how close Morin Cola is to getting this football. It's on the right shoulder behind Janoski, and here's Morin Cola coming up. Ah, it looked a little closer from up here. Again, another big third down. This one down to third and four. Sheehy goes out of the football game. Huskies not getting the right personnel in, and Damon Hewitt will have to call timeout. So the second timeout of the second half used by the Dogs. They have one remaining. Well, again, if I'm the Huskies, I give the ball to Sheehy here. Let him try and pick it up on with his running ability. Don't make a mistake on the on the air. There's Sheehy, tries to bounce it outside, gets a block, and gets the first down. He made Brian Walker miss. Boy, you got to be able to wrap him, and the Cougars didn't. Again, he's able to... Take this play that's designed to go inside the tackle. Johnny Nansen's getting held. He can't get away from Cleveland. And the missed tackle by Morin Cola there allows Sheehy to pick up the first down. So you got to give him credit, Sheehy, for, for making that really on his own. But there was a big hold in there. Johnny Nansen normally does not have his back to the ball carrier, and the officials uh, decide not to call that one. Well, first down dogs at the 19 now, as you see the total yardage in this football game. Heward to Sheehy, bit of a hole. Gain of about seven on that first down play. 6.15, clock is on the move. Cougars have to hold the Huskies out of the end zone here. Big hole in the middle. You see Gary Holmes getting, or not Gary Holmes, but Jones getting moved out of there. And nice bit of running that time again by Sheehy picking up about seven. This is the point where the Cougars need to sell out Perhaps bring a free safety blitz, make the guys up on top play man to man here. A lot of room to run that post, though. Cougars show blitz. Heward hands it off to Sheehy, tries to bounce it outside, gets a block. Sheehy inside the five to the four. Number one is really in the groove. Again, looks like there's plenty of room to move. Brandon Moore takes the bad angle that time and allows him to get to the corner. And that's tough position now for the Cougar defense. Have to have a huge defensive stand right here. 5-23 left to play in the football game. Here you can see what the Huskies have been able to do offensively in this second half. They've put the yards behind them. They're trying to get some points on the board here. Heward to Sheehy. Touchdown, Washington. Well, 
Well, this is a big extra point coming up here for John Wales. Again, this is all Sheehy. Nansen's there, not able to get off the block, and he falls in. Benji Olson smothers him, and John Wales now will come on and try to put down a big extra point, and all the Chesky fans are on the edge of their seat because they know this is an adventure sometimes. 29-22 Huskies. Shane Fortney, tough time with the hold, and oh boy, the line drive just cleared it. Huskies lead it 30 to 22. Rashawn Sheehy with his third rushing touchdown of the day. Perfect that's snap. That's his 15th of the year now, and that's a new Husky record. Perfect snap by the center for the Huskies on that play, and Fortney just had trouble with it. Again, it's a little slick out there, but Cougars now have to come up with a touchdown and the, the two-point conversion in order to tie this football game up. But like we've said, Ryan Leaf instills a lot of confidence on the WSU side. And he's shown that he can move the ball. If you can just give him a little protection, he can deliver that football to the wide receivers who've been getting open most of this afternoon. Kind of moving more into evening here as it's awful dark. The lights are on. Miguel Merriweather shouldering most of the running game activities for the Cougars since Frank Madu got taken out of this football game via the penalty and the, the right hand punch he threw cost him. Like to see a good return here. That was a nine play scoring drive and she he carried on six of the plays. Merriweather, McWashington deep. And a good kick by Wales will sail about four yards deep, and the Cougars again will start at the 20 yard line. They have 5.03, plenty of time, all three timeouts. You get the feeling, though, it's got to happen through the air now. Four and a half minutes to go in the game, and the Cougars go to the five wide receiver package. Protection for Leaf. He throws. Dumas. I think Jay made the catch. Scott Greenlaw on the coverage, but it's a first down as Dumas gets the catch. Well, that almost looked like a simultaneous catch. Greenlaw comes off of his route that's taken him deep and settles right in here, but Ryan puts the ball in the only spot it can be caught. And then Greenlaw delivers the hit. First down, though, the Cougs get a little breathing room now. Five Four. wide receivers again for Ryan Leaf in the Washington State offense. 4-11 left to play in the game. Clock on the move now down to 4.06. Leaf the quick toss, Tim's the catch, and that will be about a nine-yard game. Well, the same reason Ryan Leaf was able to score on the 12-yarder is the reason that they can complete this pass out of the five wide receiver package. There's nobody in the middle. Ikaliaga is split out. On the other side is Jensen, and there's nothing there. Ryan gets that ball down a little bit. Needs to give him a chance to run with that, but still, nice pickup. Second and one. Still nobody in the backfield. Leaf, the quick out to Dumas, first down, and he's out of bounds. So the clock will be halted until the next snap. Huskies so far content not to bring any linebackers, and Leaf is able to sit back there nice and comfortably. Deliver that ball again, wet weather. The Huskies are thinking he's going to make a mistake and make a poor throw, but he's been delivering the ball really well. There you see the time left. Cougars on a little bit of a march here now at the 48 yard line, first and 10. Cougars with trips to the right. Merriweather's in the backfield. And they'll give it to Merriweather, try to cross up the defense, and they did. Merriweather still on his feet, tries to cut it outside. Still on his feet, Merriweather at the 15. Down to the eight yard line. Miguel Merriweather. Merriweather is able to slice through initially a wide open hole. Nice block in there by Jay Dumas basically to seal off Jensen. And then he skips outside and thought he might have a chance to get to the corner, but cuts back again. And now it's a foot race between him and Parrish. He switches the ball. Parrish is able to catch him 
at about the seven yard line, make it the eight yard line. Cougars, four wide receivers, and Kwame Stewart in the backfield. Merriweather, 75 yards now. Leaf gives it to Stewart, who gets to the four. 2.55 left in the football game. Cougars need a touchdown and a two point conversion to tie. Nice bit of blocking again. McIndoo on Hoffman turns him, gets him moved out of that hole, and Kwame Stewart with that lower leverage is able to get a couple more on his own against Ink Aliaga, who's a great tackler. 2.30, clock on the move. Two tight ends, three tight ends in there now. Stewart and Merriweather both in the backfield. Merriweather, touchdown Washington State. And Cleet, I'll tell you what, I thought Ryan Leaf still had the football. And if the coaches saw that, the two-point conversion is going to be a naked bootleg. Here you see Because there was it. nobody there. No one's on Merriweather either. Jensen gets turned around. Scott Greenlaw's not able to stop him from falling over for the touchdown. And a clutch drive by Washington State. Now they spot the ball on the hash mark and are going to be able to play a little bit with the matchups. These are the situations that offensive coaches have more plays for than really defenses. Don't like to spend a lot of time on goal line situations. Offensive coaches here are coming up with the play and it looks like the Huskies are gonna call timeout. So the Huskies use their final timeout. in the backfield, two tight ends. Knuff moves into an H-back position. Leaf will throw, two-point conversion to Carpenter, the game is tied. He was wide open. Now the next decision. Kick it away. Cougars have all three timeouts left. Perfect execution on a wet field in a cold day. Carpenter just runs the little out route all alone. And Scotty Greenlaw is protecting against the post a little bit too much, and he just gets frozen in his tracks. Ryan Leaf delivers a ball right there. Nice job, great drive, all tied up at 30. The question is, with three timeouts on the Cougar side, do you go ahead and play defense? Try to go ahead and kick the ball and, and bottle up for Sean Sheehy, play for a fumble, that kind of thing, or do you do the onside kick? Right now with 217, I think I'm gonna call on my defense and go ahead and kick it away. I think you have to with three timeouts left. With three timeouts, you can stop the clock. The, the other thought process is that if you don't get the onside kick, you still kind of have the same situation where you can still control the clock Maybe you don't have as good a field position. Uh, I'm, it's a tough one. I'm Mike Price is the coach, and my, my thought process would be to kick it away and let your defense get you some good field position so Truant might get a shot at a field goal. The only thing about that is that the wind is kicked back up again, and it is in Truant's face. Well, the other side of the onside kick is it gives the Huskies a chance to score. Right. And if they get good field position, right here I'd go ahead and try to hit the squick kip maybe. And he'll kick the high kick. Huskies will field it at the 23. Jerome Pathon tries to reverse field, tries to get outside. Truant giving chase. He's run out of bounds, but the Huskies have good field position. And that was a one-man reverse, if you will, by Jerome Pathon. Terrible kick coverage today has really, really hurt the Cougars. Pathon almost falls down. Everybody collapses in there and no contain. Tony Truitt trying to get it done, and he does make the tackle, chases down Pathon, but 
Now the Huskies in a real opportunity to move the ball down far enough to get a shot with John Wales. They'll start at the Cougar 46, 2.07 to go. Huskies are out of timeouts. Sheehy on the draw. Still on his feet. He could be gone. Rashawn Sheehy having a monster day and just able to slip these tackles. I don't know what he's got on that jersey, but Shane Doyle has him look like wrapped up. There's James Darling, one of the best tacklers in the conference. Brandon Moore has to come over, almost strips that ball, but now the Huskies are in great shape and the, the short kick, the high poocher kick really backfires against Washington State. 209 yards rushing for Rushan Sheehy. Surprisingly, Heward throws and has his man. Pathon with the catch and he's out of bounds. Down to the 11. Well, no matter what happens in this football game, this has been, it's been an entertaining. This will go down as one of the more memorable Apple Cups. Walker slips down here, and they just deliver the nice little easy out. And they come down, and now they're really threatening. They're, they're thinking touchdown. The problem is they might have moved downfield too quick. Minute 35 left here. Sheehy in the backfield. You can bet he's going to get the ball. Heward, the lob for Coleman, and it's incomplete. Again, I agree with you that Sheehy's been so effective all day. There's time on that clock to go ahead and, and run the ball. They're electing to take it up top. Cougars with the free safety blitz, trying to get to Heward. And again, he lobs that one just over the outstretched arms of Coleman. No pass interference called by the officials. They're letting a lot of contact go today. Heward, a couple big balls, 276 yards. Sheehy out of alignment. Minute 31 to go in the game. Thomas in the backfield. He'll get it. Thomas down to about the seven. Clock will continue to run unless the Cougars call timeout. And if I'm Washington State, I would. Absolutely. No you need harm. to preserve that time for when you get the ball back. And no now Darling calls for the signal, but they lost about six, seven seconds. There you see Thomas just bowling forward. Here's a situation in the football game where see if Lambright's thinking field goal or if he wants to get it into the uh, into the end zone. After that last extra point attempt I'm, by Wales, I, I think if I'm the Huskies, I'd like to get it into the end zone. Absolutely, and they aren't going to be content here, I guess, just to try to get the ball into the middle of the field, but they, you know, They've got to think a little bit about how do we want to set up Wales. Does he want to kick from the left hash, the right hash? Is that their thought process, or do they go with Sheehy's strengths and give him the ball where his favorite play is and not be worried about what the kicker's thinking because it's just going to be adventure no matter if the ball's right in the middle of the field or somewhere off on the side. So uh, the Huskies got to believe Billy Dietrich, offensive coordinator, is just going to go with the play that is their best football play right here. Washington State on the other side got to decide, okay, are we going to come with the blitz? Not worry about Sheehy squirting through and just bring everybody, play man-to-man -man out on the side. My thought is you, you bring everybody. You bring Stewart right up the middle, linebackers from the outside, and hope that you get to Sheehy before he can get his feet planted and moving upfield. Third and five from the seven. Sheehy, the lone setback. Cougars show blitz. Here they come. There's Sheehy up the middle, and he stopped shy of the first down. Went right up the middle, though, so a play that really covered both options for the Huskies. And now the Cougars will call timeout again. Fourth and one now. Going right up the middle again. Maybe the thought process is to, to put the ball in the middle of the field because they didn't go wide. Just taking it right up the gut. Nick Eric Battle moving people out of there. Trevor Highfield. 
They do not pick up the first down, but at this point, I, that was a good play call, though, because it did stay in the middle of the field. So if you don't get the first down, you have a straight ahead shot at what will amount to be about a yard longer than an extra point. But yet the Huskies have struggled on extra points. A bad snap that resulted in a non conversion after the first touchdown and troubles with the hold and a knuckleball that just barely got through last time. Wales. 106 to go. Wales is on the field. He's standing all by himself. Nobody coming over to give him a high five and say no problem, just punch it through. Sean Sheehy standing alone also, and the Huskies will bring out their field goal team. Shane Fortney, you got to realize as a holder, it's extremely cold. You've been standing on the sidelines, not doing much of anything. Rainy, wet football. He'll spot it right on the 11 and a half yard line. For the win in his eyes. Opu Semenovic is the snapper. Snap spot good. Kick is good. Wales converts the 21 yarder. And the Huskies lead it 33 to 30 with a minute and two to go. Perfect snap, spot, not a lot of height, but it's drilled through there, and John Wales makes up for the bad shots against the Oregon Ducks, but he'll take this one against the Cougars. And Jeff Prince's cohort comes over to give him the congratulatory hug. A minute and two left in this football game. Washington State will have to go against the win. They would probably need to get the ball to about the 30 yard line for Tony Truitt to have any shot. Well, why not just make it academic and throw the top door and Kohler or somebody run it all the way back? <laughs> that would be a fitting end to this football game, although it wouldn't be the end of this game. That'd give the Huskies time to come back, and the way they've moved it, they might be able to get down and get into field goal or, or rather scoring position. Well, again, for all you folks that are at the branch campuses watching this closed circuit telecast, you have picked the right location, right venue, because the Cougar fans, while excited, are a little bit drenched over here in Husky Wood. Wales has been kicking the ball about two or three yards deep in the end zone. At this point, though, I go ahead and tell my returners, Warren Cola and McWashington, to go ahead and run that thing out. Take a shot at breaking the big one. 102 to go. Cougars will have one timeout left. High kick will be returnable. It's Warren Cole at the three. Gets out to about the 22 23, and there's a flag. Boy, that flag came from nowhere. And the football came loose, but the play has been whistled dead. And that is most likely going to be a penalty against the Cougars. So it's against the Cougars, as you could hear. Ben Pope, the field judge, called that illegal block in the back from way across the sideline. Ben, I got to disagree with you. I think what he called was Nelson right here. Called that a block in the back. So the Cougs got a long way to go. Ryan Leaf done about everything you could ask for as a young quarterback, Mike Price now. Coming out with five wide receivers. Washington State, 57 seconds left to get in scoring position. Leaf pressured a bit. Throws as a man wide open, it's Dumas, and he fell down. It should be enough for the first down, so that'll stop the clock for a moment. 43 seconds left. The referee finally does call timeout to move the clock or to move the chains. Boy, Dumas has room to roam here if he can keep his feet, but almost lost the football and had to get the possession first. They're gonna measure for it, so that'll give the Cougars time to regroup. Again, call a couple plays in the huddle. Tap flood, angering the crowd as they measure for this, and it looks like it's just barely enough for the first down. 
42 seconds and one timeout left for Washington State. Trailing 33 to 30. Huskies lining up, just bringing three pass rushers. Now they got Iwaliko in a pass rush stance. Quick toss over the middle, dropped by Dumas. Well, no harm with that drop pass there, other than the fact that it took about uh, six seconds off the clock. Cougars trying to squeak one out, but again, in the middle of the field here, it's going to be a lot more open. Jay Dumas a little dejected that he dropped that. Final game is a Cougar. 35 seconds left in that final game. A memorable 1995 Apple Cup. Washington State trying to make it wonderful memories, but it's going to take 80 yards in 35 seconds to do that. Leaf. Time throws Dumas. Is it a catch by Parrish? They'll say no. Tony Parrish with the defense against Dumas. Trying to slip the, the post corner in there. Ryan has a lot of time here, delivers that ball a little bit higher than Jay Dumas has a shot at, but actually that's a pretty good throw. Parrish makes the catch, comes out of bounds with it. Third down for the Cougars. They're in two down territory, obviously, but only 28 seconds left. They still have a timeout. Leaf to Dumas. That'll be a first down and out of bounds. 24 seconds. Keeping it alive. Used up half of their time. They can go ahead and huddle up, take the time that they need to. Ryan's got him up at the line of scrimmage, but clock is stopped with that play going out of bounds so they can go ahead and relax and move back into the huddle call a couple plays 24 seconds left Cougars still have the one timeout remaining a little sunshine coming out here <laughs> at the end of the game Leaf guns it the out to Carpenter did he make the catch Apparently he did, but the clock's going to keep moving. Cougars got to call timeout, and they finally do. Down to 13 seconds. Well, again, better off letting that ball go to the ground. There's not much you're going to do with a five-yard hitch. Uh, Chad's going to come over to talk to Mike about what we got to do here now. Got to be thinking downfield a little bit. Field goal position is what we're thinking. We need to get to the 30-yard line in two plays. And uh, there's no timeout left to stop the clock now. That, that last play was a very unfortunate play for Washington State. Have to play for the time or for the first down. And as the first down stops the clock, get your lineman up to the line of scrimmage. And stop the clock by grounding the ball. That's the, the thought process that you got to be thinking of right now. Cougars need to pick up at least 35 yards to give Tony Truen a good opportunity. It can be done, but you got to play smart here. Merriweather in the backfield. It's a hitch to Merriweather. That's a forward lateral. The Cougars are going to be called for the forward lateral. Good idea, but the execution not perfect. Now, Eric Moore lateraled it forward. Unfortunately, he just pitched it too far in front of him. Good call. Ryan Leap looks it up, delivers the ball perfectly, and the throw just sticks on the glove a little bit too long. Almost got it through there. Unfortunately, that's going to come back. Well, what they're going to do is give the Cougars the reception to where Eric Moore made the catch. Then it's five yards and lost it down. So with seven seconds left, the Cougars come to the line of scrimmage from the 39.
Leaf steps up, throws it deep, and there's only Tony Parrish home. That'll do it. And that's the ball game. The Huskies have survived. Washington defeats Washington State in the 1995 Apple Cup. But what a football game this has been. Mike Price and his staff and players certainly battling the dogs here in Seattle. And Jim Lambright celebrating. Because of a loss by USC to UCLA, the Huskies are now Pac-10 co-champions. And Mike Price's team will have to ride through a long offseason knowing that they've dropped their past six football games. But Cleet, they'll have a lot that they can think about here. Very positive with the way they played this football game against the Huskies. Mike Price, Coach Lambright, a couple of products out of the Everett area. Shake hands and say that was a dandy. It really was. A very entertaining football game. Brock Heward, Mike Price, those two spent a lot of time on the phone the past couple of years. So the Huskies prevail over the Cougars, the final score of 33 to 30. Well, that'll do it for this special broadcast of Washington State Cougar football. For producer, director Brian Murray, and for Cleet Casper, I'm Bud Namick. Have to mention Alex Webster, too. He got wet down on the sidelines. We didn't get a chance to hear from Alex much in the second half. But the Huskies prevail over the Cougars 33 to 30 in an entertaining Apple Cup 95, and we'll do it all again next year. Thanks for being with us.